Hi, I'm Pam from the Billie Jean King Main Library. I'm one of the children's librarians here. And I'm Janine from the Mark Twain Library. Welcome to Chapter Chat, our monthly conversation highlighting new books from our elementary and middle school collections, airing the second Wednesday of every month. We will each talk about four new books that have arrived on our shelves within the last six months. Let's begin and we will start with you, Pam. Take it away. All right, I have a historical fiction book here, which is set in California. It's called Gold Rush Girl by Avi. Avi's written, seems to me, a zillion books. So people should be familiar with him. And this is the story of 13 year old Tori Victoria actually, but she goes by Tori. And this is set in 1848. And she lives with her parents in, I believe it's St. Louis, but back East and her brother. And her dad gets the gold bug and he decides he needs to go to California. Now Tori's life being a girl in 1848 is not the best because her society aunt kind of controls what she must do and she's got to be just right. She's got to do a lot of social things. She's got to act a certain way, dress a certain way. That's just not her nature. So when her dad and brother leave, she stoves away and they don't find her until it's too late. So there she is in California with them. Her dad goes off to the gold fields, leaving her in charge of her younger brother. And Tori finds out that they need, they actually need money to live on. So she starts doing whatever she can to earn money. And she makes friends with um, a man across the street who runs a cafe, Senor uh, Rodriguez, no Rosales. And she also meets a couple of teen boys, Thad and Sam. And Sam is a musician and he is also African American and he gets in trouble for talking to a white girl. So things are okay. They're not quite sure when her dad will come back, um, but they keep going. But then her younger brother, he just can't stand just having to be there all day long. He goes out adventuring and he gets what they call crimped. So he actually gets shanghaied by some sailors and they keep him prisoner on a ship, which is part of what they call Rotten Row. It's all these old, um, boats, ships that have um, come aground in San, Fr in San Francisco. And she knows he's on one of them, but she doesn't know which one. So she gets Thad and Sam to help her go find him. And this leads to some very exciting adventures. And but best of all, Tori just never stops being independent and spirited. And she knows what she wants. She worries that she might have to go back to her old life, but she's determined to do what she can, all she can for as long as she can. And she's just a great character. And being set in California, I really hope that this wins an award for being a California book. So this is Gold Rush Girl by Avi. Very cool. I like how it's set in California. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Especially like, you know, we're known for the gold rush and everything so yeah and things. it kind of it the gold rush is kind of um you don't really know you think oh the gold rush oh it's so such a nice period and yeah and this really brings home kind of the realities of of yeah. life when you don't find gold right 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 like there are things other things that happen here other than mm -hmm. <clears throat> the gold rush so yeah interesting very cool i saw that i think on a review list or something like that and i was thinking mm -hmm. oh avi avi always makes a good book so yeah good yeah. idea okay so my first book is a canyon's edge oh i saw that one yeah it's by dusty bowling 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 i think <clears throat> and <clears throat> you can find this uh in our children's fiction section and so the story is, as you can see, there's a canyon and then a little girl right there. Mm. So just letting you know, it's kind of like a survival story. Mm. So one year ago on this exact day, 
Nora had lost her mother in a deadly shooting and her father suffered an injury that has left him in chronic pain. Even though the bullets didn't hit Nora, the incident has scarred her for life, especially her father who won't let Nora go back to school for fear of another possible shooting that Nora will experience. Luckily, Nora was able to have multiple therapy sessions with her therapist, Mary, and discover and, uh, and discovered that she was if she, that if she was ever in fear to actually ask herself, what do you fear? And her answer is always dying. Mm -hmm. And then Mary always responds with, are you likely to die in this situation? Which usually leads to Nora saying no, because you know, usually it's just you panic. Are you, what do you really fear? Fear dying? Is this really gonna kill you? No, you yeah. know in most situations um to lift their spirits up on this painful anniversary Nora's father surprises her with a trip to go canyon climbing basically climbing down into a canyon ridge Ooh. yeah in arizona so this trip starts out great they arrived at the canyon went on a hike and made a successful climb down the canyon Nora and her dad are able to somewhat forget about the tragedy and that happened last year until something terrible happens. A flash flood at the bottom of the canyon rushes through. It's so strong, so strong that the flood carries her father away and her backpack of survival gear and leaves Nora by herself and, and by herself with nothing to eat, drink or keep warm. She then goes through the same sequence of questions. What do you fear? Dying. Are you likely to die in this situation? Yes. So definitely the answers change in this particular situation. Will she be able to be reunited with her father? Will she be able to survive without any wilderness equipment to help her? Another thing that I thought was interesting was that when Nora's uh, therapist, Mary, discovered that Nora actually enjoys re uh, writing, Mary had suggested that Nora write how she feels in poetry, in poems, mm -hmm. to help cope with her mother's death. And so this book is actually written in verse. So it's definitely uh, great for those reluctant readers out there. Um, at the beginning, I believe there's about 10 chapters. They're really short chapters, but it's, it leads up to the separation between her and her father in the canyon. And then after that, it's all verse after that. So, but, you know, it's good to read some regular pages of text uh -huh. to help build up the information, you know, about the background. Yeah. So for those who are fans of The Hatchet or any survival story, mm um you will thoroughly enjoy this book oh also if you're a reluctant reader too <laughs> yeah yeah that's another one to put on my list yeah. and i always think oh i look at those books like that and i go oh that's such a long book but then when you say it's written in verse that makes it go a lot lot faster yeah for sure for sure and it's just so easy i'm just like oh okay cool but it explains so much even though mm -hmm. there's very little in it so yeah yeah pretty cool all righty. All right. Well, this is totally different. We need a little lighter book. So this is Bo and the Dragon Pup. This is the second book in um, the Unicorn Diaries. And this is by Rebecca Elliott. She wrote the Owl Diaries. And so we know what to expect, some fun adventures. This is the story of Bo and his friends. And at school, they get to earn a different patch every week for some accomplishment. <coughs> Excuse me. This week they're going to earn their detective badges because they have to find out who stole things out of their classroom. And they follow the clues and it leads them to a dragon, which they are terrified of, even though it's a young dragon. And is the dragon really the culprit? We don't know. You'll have to read it and find out. But this is uh, very sweet. Very colorful, very easy to read. Just perfect for beginning chapter book readers. If you like the Owl Diaries, and if you like unicorns especially, you're gonna like this book. 
very sweet, very fun, very nice. Oh, very cute. Yeah. I like those books. A lot of a lot of kids um, like to read those two series or mm -hmm. that one and the uh, Owl Diaries too. Pretty cute. I like the illustrations. Yeah. <laughs> Good friendship story. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Okay. So this one, I guess this is also on the lighter note as well. Oh, good. Yeah, kind of, to a certain extent. But you'll, you'll see. <laughs> this one's called <laughs> The Prettiest by Bridget Young. Uh, this book is found in our middle school section. Uh, it kind of reminds me of the middle school version of Mean Girls. Mm. and any like makeover show or movie any make those makeover movies and so this book is told in three different perspectives mm. eve a shy and quiet girl eighth grader who tries to go through middle school unnoticed and hides her growing and curvy body with her brother's baggy sports jerseys then the second perspective is nessa eve's plus size best friend who enjoys the enjoys the school theater and watching dancing competitions. And then there's Sophie, the most popular girl in school, so popular that they call her and her group the and her group of friends the Sophies. <laughs> but all is about to change when a list of the top 50 prettiest girls is posted online for everyone in the eighth grade to see. And who do you think is number one? It's actually Eve, just before Sophie. Eve is number one, Sophie's number two. Middle school in general is already uh, makes things, it's really hard in middle school. But to post a list that objectifies girls, making them just a number, makes it even harder. So this cruel prank leaves all the girls at the school emotional and distraught. Tears are shed. Many texts of sexual harassment and prejudice mm. are sent from unknown numbers. Wow. To get to the bottom of this, these three girls band together and form an unlikely trio to find out who created the list. They suspect it to be the most popular boy in school, Brady. But will their plan lead to Brady's confession? Or mm -hmm. could it be someone else who created the list? You'll have to read it to find out. Mm -hmm. These characters speak exactly like middle schoolers, which let readers easily relate to the characters. I was actually listening to the audiobook, and it really sounded a lot like the dialogue in Mean Girls. <laughs> like, whoa, OK, this is real. Uh, so yeah, and you know, to also and on top of that, to me, this book almost seems like a, a mystery novel because they're, you yeah. know, trying to figure out who the culprit is. And yeah, who did that? Find justice, yeah. basically. And so, well, the clues do point to Brady, but is he really the culprit? We'll have to see. <laughs> yeah, another mystery. Yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, this one. It was one of my favorites. This is the one and only Bob oh. by Catherine Applegate. And this is a sequel to the one and only Ivan, which I'm sure everybody loved. I hope so anyway. Um, I didn't see the movie, but I read the book. And um, so this is the story of Bob the dog. And he's very little. I think he's a chihuahua. But um, he acts much bigger than what he actually is. So little Bob is best friends with Ivan the gorilla and Ruby the young elephant. Ruby's mother was the one who lived with Ivan in the mall. So they're very close. But now they live in a zoological sanctuary that's not too far from where Bob is. And luckily Bob's owner will take him down there often so he can sit on the wall between Ivan and Ruby and visit with the two of them and be best friends with him. And so it's a really good life for Bob, even though he's no longer a wild dog, he's now a pet. But one day a tornado or hurricane strikes and Bob becomes a hero. 
people, there's missing, things are missing, animals are missing. Um, there's big drama because there's an animal shelter nearby and they can't decide whether to let the dogs and cats loose to transfer them to another place. What should they do? And Bob actually becomes the hero of the day by, well, you'll have to read it and find out. But this of course is told by Bob himself who thinks quite highly of himself. And it, this would make a great read aloud. It would be um, a wonderful for a family to read together um, because each animal has a very distinct personality. Ivan is still drawing. Ruby is just very sweet. And things happen that seem unbelievable, an unbelievable coincidence. And, but somehow they all seem believable when you're reading. So this is the one and only Bob, and I highly, highly recommend it. Oh, how cute. Is it written kind of like the same, like a lot of space in between the lines and all that? Yes, oh. yes. Here is um, an example. Yeah. So it's one of those books that, again, looks long, but because of large print and lots of spaces, mm -hmm. a very fast read. And then you get caught up in the story, too. Yeah. Because yeah. she's very good at cliffhangers and short chapters. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's it's not your usual dog story. Oh, yeah. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> I know how those can end. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Okay. So back to a little more of a downer. <laughs> 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 so um, downer, but good, I swear. So this one, this got to our shelves over the summer in July. So it kind of just made the cutoff for the six months uh, to do this for chapter chat. And it's Seven Clues to Home by Guy Polisner and Nora Rayleigh Basket. Uh, this book uh, is about Joy and Lucas, their best friends since second grade, and have slowly become aware of each other's feelings for one another. Now they're they're in a sixth grade, I believe. I, yes, sixth grade, six or seven. But every year on their birthdays, which were only two days apart, and they would each create a scavenger hunt to, to for each other for the other. Unfortunately, on Joy's twelfth birth, birthday, Lucas met his untimely death. She was mm. never able to tell how, him how she felt about him and also never opened the envelope revealing the first clue for her birthday scavenger hunt. Mm. Now it's a year later and she finally gathers the courage to open the first letter of Lucas's scavenger hunt on her 13th birthday. It's exactly a year later. This book is told in both Joy's perspective in present day and Lucas's perspective the time leading up to his death, while also unveiling an unpleasant, very unpleasant home life. Because the reader doesn't know what happens to Lucas, this book reads like a romantic mystery novel in a way, mm. because you know they're trying to reveal their feelings for each other and, and all that stuff, even though you know he's passed. Um, I definitely get a bridge to Terabithia in combination with the movie My Girl, kind of get that kind of combination vibe from it. Um, so the, the only thing that's different, obviously, is the friend's death is revealed at the beginning of the story instead of the end. Sometimes that actually might help <laughs> the reader. Yeah. Knowing, OK, this is going to happen. So prepare, <laughs> you know, it's one of those things. But it's, I think it's kind of cool that they do a flashback every other chapter in Lucas's mm. perspective. Then it's Joy's perspective and then back and forth. So it's kind of like you see everything transforming, not only today and present day, but also in, in the past during Lucas's time. So yeah, so I definitely recommend it though. <laughs> yeah, very sad. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's good that they kind of tell you at the beginning, because sometimes you're reading along and you're thinking, oh, this is sweet. This is what. And then you're like, what? I know. 
I know. And I get that feeling every time I like when I read Bridge to Terabithia or watched the movie My Girl. I'm like, oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh. oh. Anyways. Yeah. That happened when well a long, long time ago when we saw the movie Love Story. Oh yeah. And it had that ending and people were like, What? <laughs> he he what? You're like, are you serious? <laughs> that can't be. I know. Well, my last book was my favorite. Um, I was trying to read some of the books that were not um, part of the Newbery nominees. And this is one of them. And this is uh, Lauren Castillo, Our Friend Hedgehog, The Story of Us. It reminded me a lot of um, Winnie the Pooh with all the different animals who end up being friends. This is a beginning chapter book. Well, I made it a beginning chapter book because inside there's lots of pictures and I think a little more text than there would be for a beginning reader so at the main library it's in the chapter books but this is the story of Hedgehog and Muddy and Muddy is a stuffed dog it looks like a real dog but I, he's a stuffed dog and they are best friends and then one day a terrible storm blows Muddy away and so Hedgehog has to go find him and along the way, Hedgehog, she meets Wiggly Mole. And of course, the owl is wise, just like Owl in Winnie the Pooh. <coughs> Excuse me. She meets Grumpy Beaver, Playful Chicks, their watchful mother. And they all help Hedgehog retrace Muddy's path. And it leads them to Annika May. That's her right there. She's new in the neighborhood, so she hasn't had time to make friends. But she has a Polaroid a camera. She loves to take photos. And somehow, miraculously, they can all understand each other. And the day ends happily for, for these new friends. And as I showed you, there are bright, wonderful illustrations on every page. And Mole just might be Latina because she serves hedgehogs some horchata, and she uses some Spanish phrases in when she speaks. So that was, that was kind of an, an interesting twist to me. Um, this is just right for beginning chapter book readers, although they might need an explanation about Annika's camera because I don't think many kids know what a Polaroid camera is, but she, that's what she has. So, and I, I'm really hoping that this could somehow become a series because I really, really enjoyed it. And I would love to see it win, win some kind of award just because it's just a wonderfully um, terrific tale of friendship. And so that's Hedgehog, our friend Hedgehog, the story of us. Oh, how cute. Is she the uh, same author that did Nana in the City? Um, let me see book? if it says that. Yes, she did Nana okay. in the City. She did one called The Troublemaker. And she did one called Melvin and the Boy. So this is her with Hedgehog on her shoulder. Oh, how cute. Yeah. Yeah, the illustrations kind of reminded me of Nana in the City. I love yeah. that book. It's so and cute. I just thought if somehow this became a really, really well-known book, that these would make really cute stuffed animals. Yeah. That's true. And it could be like a Coles thing, have the book. Oh, it. yeah. I just thought it was just wonderful. They can maybe do a Polaroid one too. <laughs> yes, yes. If you, were, if you were doing a program on this, you could bring in a yeah. Polaroid camera and show the kids how it works. And Yeah. Yeah. We should, we should like sign up to be Coles like product line. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, they actually did uh, on Ellen's game show one of the challenges was to figure out how to use a Polaroid camera and take a <laughs> selfie. And, oh my God. And one person never did figure it out. Yeah. But, but anyway, great, great story. Yeah, very cute. Very cute. If you need something uplifting. Yeah. Happy, happy. happy. Yes. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that one because this one is, uh, it's a little, little tricky. Like it okay. kind of is sad, but it's, <laughs> in a way like both happy and sad so oh she's a good writer i see yeah, that. yeah. oh yeah so <clears throat> this one is called closer to nowhere 
um, by Ellen Hopkins. And you can find this on our middle school shelves. This actually arrived uh, this month. And so this actually is in another book that is written in verse and also written in two different perspectives. So there's Hannah and then Calvin or Cal for short. And, and it starts out sad. Cal's mother, Hannah's, uh, Hannah's mother's twin sister, so Hannah's aunt, uh, recently passed away from cancer. Mm -hmm. And Cal's abusive father is serving time in jail. So now Cal is living with Hannah and her family and wants nothing more than to, to feel safe and have a roof over his head. But him living there makes things a little more complicated. Hannah has always enjoyed stability, control, and affection from her parents. But Cal's uncontrollable moments of rage, disruptive behavior, and runaway moments make Hannah feel embarrassed to be associated with him. It's starting to create uh, more arguments between her parents. Uh, but given that Hannah has a pretty great life in, com in comparison, it is very hard for a sixth grader to deal with change in their lives. Because of Calvin's moments, Hannah's parents are, like I said, they were arguing more. Father is having to work longer hours, longer than normal mm. and farther than normal in order to support another mouth to feed in the household. Cal always explains himself, but he always embellishes on this, on his extravagant story that it's hard to believe him most of the time. Uh, he actually becomes a little worried that he, when he realizes that he m may be taken away from the first real home he's actually had. Uh, with all of his outbursts and everything, he's running away. He, who, what do you expect? You might call the authorities, you might need to get the police involved to find you. And that might not look good to them <laughs> in like basically, you know, basically another home or foster in a way it's a foster care situation anyway because you know they're not his parents well will these two cousins uh, be able to hear each other out well you'll have to read it and find out maybe they might be able to mend things and help help uh help out in whichever way possible for each other so this book is the first middle school novel by ellen hopkins um, who is best-selling author of the Crank series. So that kind of makes sense for this book to be written in verse. So, which is pretty cool. So it'll be easy for those reluctant readers. Mm -hmm. And it's actually, it's a, uh, they, they switch between, I believe uh, each, I think uh, between, maybe it's, I think it's a verse, like a few verses with each. So a few with Cal and then a few with um, mm -hmm. Anna. So it just goes back and forth. But it's very interesting because it, it goes in sequence. So you don't see the perspective of both of them. Like you don't hear the perspectives of both mm -hmm. of them in a certain situation. A, a situation happens, then it goes to Cal or, or Hannah. And then her, her, his or her situation happens then it goes to the next sequence the next time. Oh. So it's not, you see both perspectives within the same uh, situation. So mm -hmm. Pretty cool. I kind of liked it. I was listening to it and I thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to hear Cal's version of Hannah's, you know, perspective. And I'm like, oh good, it's going on to the next. So it kind of goes, it kind of speeds through pretty fast, the timeline yeah. at least. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, that seems to be a trend. It's a lot of the books we've shared have, are written in verse. So I, yeah. that I guess is a trend for middle school now. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, a lot of times it is hard to grab those reluctant readers at the beginning and they could still be reluctant readers throughout mm -hmm. elementary school and then into middle school also. So I know I know that's true for because I'm a living example. <laughs> <laughs> such a reluctant reader when I was younger. I just did not want to pick up a book. If yeah, I had these I, books back then, oh my yeah. God, I would probably be a writer right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's insane. And I, and I used to work with re very reluctant readers yeah. and um, they, 
they would deliberately ask for big, long books so that it looked like it was very impressive, even though they really couldn't read them. Mm -hmm. So in this case, if they had books written in verse, they probably actually could yeah. have read them. For sure, for sure. And I know that, yeah, like we said before, it's just like, even though they seem like hefty, long books, like really mm -hmm. thick books or thicker than usual or thicker yeah. than they're used to, then, but really because they're in verse, it's so much easier. Yeah. So quick. And the book jackets have gotten more, I don't know, sophi not sophisticated, but more Yeah, uh, more realistic. eye catching. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Definitely. I think it's very, very uh, pretty artwork now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Marketing and all that. So, yeah. Sorry, yeah. I have sirens going on behind me. Oh, dear. <laughs> I was worried about that. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> At least it's the well, end. I guess those are those are yeah. our books for this month. Thank and you. if people want to find them and check them out, we hope that you will read them. Um, you can look for us on um, our website. Just go to uh, our book catalog and put in chapter chat 0121. And we have this very wonderful background created by one of our children's librarians here, Miss Denea, did a great job on that. And I believe that our contact information is there too. So you can always email us and ask us, what are we reading now? Mm -hmm. So we hope to see you next month and we'll end with you All saying right. goodbye. Goodbye, it was good seeing you. <laughs> Bye everyone. Bye.